<laughs> Thank you guys. Welcome to DartConf. It's so good to have you uh, all here. Um, my name is uh, Tim Sneath, and I'm the group product manager for Flutter and Dart. Um, I've been only at Google for about nine weeks uh, so far. Um, after joining from Microsoft, where I spent 20 years, or just under 20 years, working on different client technologies, including WPF, Silverlight, uh, Internet Explorer, uh, and uh, Windows. <laughs> Uh, honestly, though, I expected to be with Microsoft for a good many years to come. But about six months ago, uh, I came across Flutter, and I kind of fell in love. Um, so today, I kind of want to tell you a little bit about what brought me here. So we're going to be talking about two primary technologies this morning. Of course, one is Dart. This is, after all, the Dart conference. And Dart is a fast, powerful, and productive language that is optimized for client-side development. The other is Flutter, which is a new mobile UI framework from Google for crafting high-quality native experiences for iOS and Android. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been iterating on our vision to try and make sure that we fully convey the opportunity that we see here. And here's what we've come up with. We want to help developers craft beautiful, native experiences across all screens with a client-optimized language, rich, powerful frameworks, and delightful and flexible tooling. And we believe we're at a unique inflection point at this time in building mobile application software, where the time is right for a new framework that combines all these attributes together. So I want to tell you a story about one of the first companies to build an application using this framework and their experiences. In fact, instead of me telling you the story, I want to show you uh, this short video. Hamilton is one of the most talked about and best loved musicals with shows on Broadway, in London, and around the country. We wanted something to make the show more accessible for our fans, so we wanted to develop an app to meet the needs of fans as we started to expand the brand. We turned to Posse, a New York-based development firm, to help us develop the Hamilton app. Hamilton's Flutter app launched in the App Store and the Play Store three months after we wrote our first line of code. And we accomplished a ton. Fans can enter a daily lottery for a shot at $10 tickets, buy merchandise through an e-commerce experience, take selfie photos with the ham cam, and get daily news and updates. We knew that this app needed to be rock solid, both in terms of performance and visual fidelity, and really represent the amazing experience that the Hamilton show itself provides. And ultimately, that's why we decided to use Flutter. Flutter is a mobile UI toolkit that allows developers and designers to craft beautiful native experiences on iOS and Android and is entirely free and open source. We have very high expectations of quality for the apps that we build. We expect pixel perfect results and we need them to be very high performance. Flutter gave us a lot of opportunities that previously weren't available to us. The fact that it's a single code base drastically improved our ability to deliver a consistent experience across platforms. Its hot reload gives us an ability to build more features in less time. It allowed me to make changes really fast and iterate through the UI without having to stop and restart the app. Coming from an iOS and Android background, it's something that I've been waiting for for a long time. The Flutter developer community is very active. Drop-in packages helped us maximize productivity. It helped us integrate elements like Firebase and Cloud. At the end of the day, we're just really happy that we found Flutter so that we can build these beautiful native interfaces for both iOS and Android from a single code base. We're given a really tight timeline and we turn the app around faster than I ever could have imagined. We were able to make changes right up to the night before we went live and really feel confident about them. In fact, we pushed an entirely new feature to the App Store the day before we launched. And since launch, Flutter's efficiency and speed has helped us to build new features such as the recent trivia game. We're really excited because as the show continues to grow, we're going to be able to keep pace with a ton of new features that's going to make the app even better. We couldn't be more thrilled with Flutter. It has enabled us to use one code base to deliver a truly high quality app that Hamilton fans have absolutely fallen in love with. We're thrilled with what Posse was able to deliver. The entire brand of Hamilton is about delivering on an experience for fans. They're thrilled about the new features that we're rolling out and we're really excited to see where the app goes next.
So cool, I got to hang out with uh, some of the team from Posse uh, last week in New York, and it's amazing what they've done there. I particularly love that the speed uh, that they were able to start building and get a, a great result uh, on uh, their Hamilton app. And uh, the results are, are in from the, the various stores. Uh, we've already seen a million or more uh, installs of the Hamilton app uh, with over 450,000 uh, uh, monthly active users. Uh, so it's, it's been a really powerful experience and a great example of how Dart and Flutter come together to build great application experiences. OK, so let's break it down a little. We're going to spend the next little while talking about each of these three parts and why we think together they make this platform a compelling opportunity for client developers. And we're going to start with the language, which is, of course, Dart. So Dart is the backbone for everything we're building. It's a stable, complete, battle-tested language. This isn't an architectural diagram, but Dart is more than just a language, of course. Uh, it includes a set of core libraries, it includes compilers, transpilers, it's got runtime support for advanced language capabilities like garbage collection, as well as a rich ecosystem of tools and packages. And Dart started on the web, but we've evolved it over time to add mobile, and that's been our direction moving forward. As we look across the web, we're seeing evidence that Dart is starting to become popular. We used Google BigQuery to do a scan across the uh, public GitHub corpus to see how many uh, lines of code there were out there with, it, with Dart. And we're already seeing that there's over 70 million lines of code out there. And you can see that over the last couple of years, Dart is starting to take off. It's not a top 10 language yet, but as you can see from the shape of this Tiobe index, uh, Dart is really starting to climb up the rankings or the ratings. OK, but there are lots of languages out there. Why do we specifically think Dart is a good one? Well, there are three things in my mind. Firstly, as you saw with the Hamilton app, and as you'll see again later, Flutter has this amazing capability called Hot Reload, which allows you to deploy an application to your device and continue to change it in profound ways while it's still running. And Hot Reload lets you quick, quickly uh, iterate on your UI design. You can make changes to your application and continue immediately to see the results of those changes uh, whilst the application keeps running. And that doesn't just happen. It's powered by Dart. Dart provides a JIT compiler, and it provides the support and integration with Flutter uh, at runtime for changing code and keeping the state uh, alive as, as the new pieces of code are deployed into the, into the VM. Secondly, Dart is near unique as, in having a number of different outputs for it. Dart is designed uh, around uh, the ability to support mobile and web applications. If you're building a mobile application as a developer, we have a JIT compiler that gives you the great developer support for things like Hot Reload. But we also have native ahead of time compilation to machine code, whether it's ARM or something else, so that you can achieve that native performance on your released product. Similarly, if you're building a web app, we have transpilers, and we have a couple of those as well. We have one that is designed for development purposes, that has uh, lightning speed compilation, uh, and we also have one that is designed for highly scalable production quality uh, code. Thirdly, the fact that Flutter can reconstruct, or sorry, that the Dart uh, can reconstruct the, the uh, environment quickly uh, relies on the memory management of Dart, uh, a garbage collector that is designed around the client, making allocating new objects fast and have, making uh, short-lived objects very cheap to manage. And this is, again, an example of how the partnership of Flutter and Dart pays off well together. We worked to have the engine and the garbage collector talk to each other so that garbage collection occurs during idle times. And finally, Dart puts all of these pieces together in a single language. It's an open standard. It's published by ECMA. Uh, it's the same body that standardizes JavaScript. Everything's open source. It's all published on GitHub. It's open to inspection and open to your contributions. So, we mentioned those 70 million lines of code on GitHub. But how is Google using Dart? Well, I'd like to invite Kevin Moore, who is a fellow product manager on the Dart team, to come up and talk a little bit about that. Kevin. Thanks, Tim. 
So a lot of people have come to Dart recently because of Flutter. I like to say that you know this is not a comeback. We've been here for years, um, actually over five years. Um, we've been using Dart at Google, primarily on the website. And as Tim talked about, a lot of the features that make Dart so powerful are the fact that we can do language work and library work that works great and builds high performance, mission critical applications on the web and on mobile with no compromises. A lot of solutions that exist today that say they can let you do both, you really have to do some tweaking and fighting to get it working everywhere. And Dart really nails it. Um, as Tim mentioned, we're designed to um, be cross-compiled, so you compile the really efficient JavaScript. And we have Dart as, you know, with its type system, with its strong language features, allows us to build giant frameworks. Frameworks that allow us to build things like AdWords. So, a lot of people aren't familiar with what AdWords is. This is a product, has anyone here actually used AdWords? Oh, there are a few people, that's good. Usually in an engineering crowd, there aren't a lot of folks. You've certainly seen the output of AdWords. If you ever do a Google search, and I'm guessing a few of the people in the room have, <laughs> if you see an ad on a Google search, or even a text ad in YouTube or Google Shopping, it was probably bought via AdWords. AdWords was completely rewritten in the last few years with Dart and our framework, Angular Dart, again, all open source. Um, and it's really tough to emphasize how big a deal this is. I talked to one of our vice presidents before the talk, and was like, can I talk about how many lines of code we have in Dart and Google? And he's like, eh, we really can't talk about that. And I was like, can we talk about how many engineers we have working with our web tools inside Google? It's like, ah, oh, we really can't talk about that. Which really taught me an important thing, which is always ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Um, <laughs> but what I did ask is like, well, can I show a demo and talk about how much money it makes? And he's like, well, that's all public. It's like, oh, perfect. Um, so all you have to do is go look at a quarterly statement from Google to see how much money we make on ad revenue. It's not a small part of the Google business. Um, and it's all primarily driven by AdWords. So I was trying to think of the superlative to describe the requirements, and I think intimidating was the word I landed on that I liked the most. Um, this team has to build an app that has to be rock solid. Like, anyone here that has an application that takes credit cards, you realize any minute of downtime is lost revenue. So it has to be stable. It has to be fast. People expect this kind of experience, this rich experience, to feel like a native application, like a desktop application. Remember having to install those? Um, and it has to let them iterate quickly. This is still a very competitive business. The people that buy ads expect new features to be rolled out continually. And so the engineers have to be able to move really quickly. And what's great is because of Dart's flexibility, its type system, its core libraries, um, not only enabled us to build the frameworks that we use to drive these tools, but allowed us to build a compelling application. So without showing you how to buy an ad on AdWords, I at least want to show you the application we have. If you can switch to the demo, please. This is AdWords. Exciting. <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna do, and it's, it's kind of a silly, I'm gonna do the Shift Command R trick, just to so, show how fast loading the application is. This is a giant application. I don't know if people have reloaded Gmail before, um, but for the size and scale of what this accomplishes, we actually, because we have a very smart compile, compiler that knows how to tree shake and do lots of other clever things, we actually generate relatively small binaries for large applications. Secondly, I just wanna show some of the richness of this. Um, even things like a button click, I could just do this for hours. <laughs> like, the subtle material animations. You'll notice the load, app, the, the load animations. This application is actually broken into several small parts, and we de delay load them as you click around. This allows our initial load time to be very small, and allows us to um, segment the application up logically. And again, this is one of those things where having a strong type system and being able to rely on you know, things like static analysis are really important. It allows our engineers to build multiple segments of a huge application and have high confidence that when you deploy, it all glues together well and the messages send well. So things like you know, slide out animations, really big lists. Wait for the delay load here. All work really fast. And this is 100% written in Dart. So if I want to target my Angular Dart ad at my father, I can go in here very easily and make sure he sees it. And even silly things like the calendar control. Um, if you look at just the mouse over behaviors, we show the highlight, you know, the ability to do drag and drop. Um, Tim and I both spent a lot of time working on desktop frameworks where we had complete control of the operating system and the, and the OS stack, and accomplishing these kinds of effects and this kind of speed was really difficult. Um, and it's so exciting to work on a platform that enables delivering these type of applications to the open web. Um, and that's what Dart let us do. 
Back to slides, please. Um, so speaking of superlatives, uh, we talked to Manish about just the experience of deploying AdWords with Dart, and again, how critical it was to Google's revenue, how the shape of the language, the libraries, the tooling we have, really offered an amazingly productive, productive experience for the engineers. Um, and given what they came from, um, it's, you know, it's a very validating thing to be a product manager on because they've just been so delighted in their productivity. And of course, when you have very productive engineers um, in such a critical business, that really maps to increased revenue. Thank you, Kevin. AdWords is such a great example of how Dart, coupled with the web framework that uh, Dart provides, enables you to build these highly scalable, fast performance experiences. So Dart 1 was good. But we listened to you, people in our community, uh, people uh, on GitHub and other places, and you told us a couple of things about how you were using Dart and some innovations you'd like to see in the language. In particular, you told us that optional types are sometimes hard to use. Uh, you told us that as you write more and more code in Dart, you'd like us to help you as a language uh, reduce the amount of boilerplate code in your, in your code. And then thirdly, you said you'd like us to just iterate faster with the language to build new uh, innovations or new language features into the language. So today, I'm delighted to formally announce Dart 2, which is... <laughs> Dart 2 is a reboot of Dart as a language optimized for client development. Dart 2 is mainly about three things. Firstly, strong mode. Secondly, some new language features. And thirdly, a common front end. Let's talk about each of these in turn. Firstly, strong mode. So when the team first designed Dart, they were inspired by the dynamic, loose typing model of the web. It seemed great. But as we scaled up Dart 1 to extremely large applications, we found that stronger typing really helped us to detect errors. And of course, this is becoming a trend on the web as well, as you can see from the rise of languages like TypeScript. So here's an example of how insidious errors can sometimes creep into your code with a weaker type system. This is a simplified example of an actual bug we found in our AdWords code. Uh, you can see here that there's some code. It's uh, taking some prices, trying to sort them, and return the lowest price. Uh, any guesses as to what the price reported will be? <laughs> I'm hearing a few different answers here. Some, some expert Dart engineers have already figured this out. Maybe they're the people on the Dart team. Um, yeah, the answer is 10,000. Um, and that's because uh, of the way that uh, the strings are, are converted. When, when the initialization takes place, uh, it essentially return, uh, converts price into a dynamic list. So strong mode enforces type checking. And it means that you can never get into such a state where an evalu expression evaluates to a value that doesn't match the expression static type. So with strong mode, we get better error messages earlier. So issues like this are caught immediately. And so you see here, this is a dart pad with strong mode turned on. And you immediately see that there's a, a, a squiggly line underneath warning you that there's an error. So strong mode, we think, is a good step forward for Dart as a language that will help with these broader, big production quality applications. Secondly, new language features. I mentioned that we're evolving and rebooting Dart to be optimized for the client. And here's a great example of how we can reduce the amount of boilerplate. So this is a, a bit of Flutter code to build a widget. Um, and as you may know, Flutter uses Dart to actually create and instantiate uh, the UI. And this is an interesting challenge. A lot of languages try and create a separate markup language for the UI declaration because they, the language itself is not really designed around UI. And with Dart, we think we're onto something here where the UI can be expressed in the same uh, code file as the rest of your uh, logic, the, the, the model, the view controller, all appearing in the same place. The problem with this is that there's a little too much language ceremony associated with the declarations here, and it gets in the way of that UI. In particular, there's a lot of new and const sort of boilerplate. Uh, you can't miss it out, and it can actually cause confusion if you suddenly forget uh, to put in a const and uh, suddenly all the uh, uh, extra intelligent help from the editor sort of disappears. So wouldn't it be great if we could get rid of that 
and just focus on building the UI. So with this specific new language feature, we've made, optional, we've made new and const optional. And so now you can write something like this in Dart 2, where there's not actually a single uh, Dart keyword involved in the uh, um, declaration uh, of, of, uh, of your uh, uh, widget. Pretty cool, huh? And following uh, this, we're looking at how we can make the UI as code experience even better with future uh, re uh, releases and iterations of the Dart language. And Leaf is going to be talking a little bit more about language features after this uh, keynote, so you'll hear some other uh, examples. The third thing in Dart 2 is uh, the, the introduction of a common front end. Now, lots of tools and compilers that are out there already that allow us to handle uh, Dart code. Today, most of them are built independently, which admittedly allows different teams to work fast and to iterate quickly. But many of the tasks that each of these different uh, items uh, needs to uh, perform are actually common. And so that means there's lots of rework, lots of these tools doing the same things. And worst, there's a risk of inconsistency if there are subtle differences in how they handle uh, the Dart language. So with Dart 2, we're introducing a new common front end to our tooling. And this front end, of course, analyzes the source code uh, to build an internal representation of the program. It manages the symbol tables and those kinds of things. And the benefit of that is that uh, we get more consistency across these individual pieces. It means we can move faster with the language by adding new features. And in some cases, uh, those changes don't even require back-end changes. Also, it enables us, it positions us well uh, for the future to make improvements uh, to uh, the client side that might actually uh, take advantage of this. For example, a new tool uh, like the one we introduced last week that lets you inspect widgets. So to recap, strong mode, new language features, a common front end. We just in this last week flipped the Dart 2 switch for Flutter. And we're now working on the remaining issues to get ready to swap in the new front end. So we'll have full strong mode and the new language features available. OK, so that's Dart. Let's move up the stack a little. And I want to talk now about Flutter. Dart has built some amazing things. Um, and really, it's Flutter in many ways that were one of the first to actually find the Dart language and realize its vision and uh, to, to build uh, on the innovations that, that, Flutter, uh, that Dart introduces. So in some ways, while Dart is like the high-performance gasoline that powers the car, Flutter is the engine that helps take it forward at speed. And here's the problem we're trying to solve with Flutter. A lot of people are trying to build mobile apps right now. And with multiple popular platforms for building mobile apps, historically, there's been two different approaches to solving this. On the one hand, many people choose to build for a single platform at once. They'll have a team that's dedicated to building an iOS application or an Android application. And that has many benefits. Of course, you can build something that is really native to the underlying platform. But there's also a downside. You have to have two separate code bases. Sometimes te teams power have literally two separate teams that struggle to connect together and talk together and share designs, et cetera. The alternative approach that a lot of uh, companies use is to look at uh, various cross-platform frameworks that are becoming increasingly popular as a way to, to use one code base to target both platforms at once. On the plus side, that means one code base, so you can execute and iterate quickly. The problem is that they often trade performance or native experience for that single code base. For example, they might be built with JavaScript as their language and interpreted at runtime. Or they just don't feel native because of the lowest common denominator approach to the widgets. And that's where Flutter comes in. Flutter makes it easy and fast to build beautiful, native mobile apps. Flutter is the best of both worlds. It's fast and it's native. You have a single code base, and yet you can still take full advantage of the underlying operating system. And Flutter is powered by some great code and engineering that we've taken from other places. The Skia graphics stack, a fast and powerful text rendering engine, and of course, the Dart language. Flutter is a reactive framework. It has a deep notion of state that flows through the system. So it's always clear what needs updating, and we only need to repaint the widgets that need it. 
And it being native means that you can access always the underlying APIs. You can still write parts of your app in Kotlin or Java or Swift or Objective-C or leverage others' work with packages to make that happen as well. I love this little quote here that is uh, from, uh, the, uh, from, from Hacker News. Um, it feels like the kind of thing that I would have written myself. It feels like a futuristic version of the Android SDK. Um, but rather than me um, sort of just chair somebody else's quote, uh, I'd like to invite onto stage um, Yere and uh, Toro from uh, Hukul, uh, who are one company who've built a Flutter app that is launching today uh, in beta for Android and for iOS. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi, Hi, how are you doing? Thanks. Hi, Tim. Hey, good to see you. Nice to be here. So tell me a little bit, firstly, tell me what is Hukul? Well, Hukul is a young startup, and um, uh, we have been less than five months before, uh, less than five months in here. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're developing a social media management tool uh -huh. on the go. Okay. So we need an application and tool for developing that. Okay. Yeah. And so, so Hukul is a social media app, right? Just yes. tell me a little bit more about what it, what it does. Okay. Yeah, you can actually post to all of your social media uh -huh. just with a one app, one click. Okay, okay. So why did you pick Flutter specifically as your technology to build Hukul? Well, that's a good question and actually a funny story. Uh, when we started the company five months ago, uh, we, didn't, we haven't heard about Flutter back then. So uh, we started to evaluate these uh, more traditional, like uh, native Android and uh, React Native kind of a flat uh, frameworks. We had our requirements, like uh, we wanted to have a native uh, like performance, smooth user experience, and uh, we wanted it to run on both iOS and Android, not to mention cost efficiently uh -huh. to develop this all. And last but not the least, we wanted it to be out quickly in timetable, impossible, mm -hmm. of course. Okay. So then, uh, none of these actually these uh, frameworks didn't fulfill our requirements. So our developer actually suggested suddenly Flutter, and he told that it's going to fulfill all the requirements, and we were amazed. And that's actually why we're here now, because we chose Flutter. And we have our beta version out and there uh, on iOS and Android. Fantastic. So um, just tell me a little bit about your experiences using Flutter then. Tell me from a technical level, what is it about Flutter that attracts you? Tim, out of all of the good features Flutter provides, <laughs> I actually went to our developers, thanks to them, uh, asked them if you need to name two most important features that you love about Flutter. So here you go. Uh, number one, hot reload. Uh -huh. Hot, stateful, reload is a killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, 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 then another one. Other one is, uh, uh, is the customizable UI. Uh -huh. It's amazing. You can just customize anything you want. That's about it. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So. <laughs> Thank you. So the application is, is live right now in beta on both stores, right? Tell me a little bit about that. How can people get it? Yes. Yeah, well, it's a public beta uh -huh. on uh, Google Play, so you can get it today. Uh -huh. Just uh, Google it. Google it. <laughs> Google there it. we are. <laughs> <laughs> a new verb, Google it. <laughs> and uh, then if you want to use uh, uh, Apple version, if, iOS version, if, we have a, a stand booth there outside in the break time, so you can go there and uh, just give email, and uh, we give it to you on a test flight. Great. Yeah. I've seen your app. It looks beautiful. It's a really good example of the power of Flutter in action. Yes. There's a little yes. video of it behind yes. the scenes there. But uh, yeah, I'd encourage everybody, go download it, check it out. Uh, and if you want the Android, sorry, the iOS version, and you're not uh, physically here, I guess you can email uh, these guys, and they'll yes. give you a test flight sure. uh, code to activate yes. it, right? Just come to us. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hey, guys, thank Great. you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So Flutter's only in alpha, but we already have over 200 apps in the Google Play Store, and we're continuing to see uh, apps start to take off here. And we think this is a, a, the point in time where maybe Flutter is starting to be that sort of uh, that firework that's caught the spark and maybe starting to take off a little bit. 
We launched Flutter back in, uh, or we, we announced Flutter, I should say, at I.O. Uh, and since uh, uh, I.O. last year, so that's, what, nine months or so, uh, there's been a whole bunch of new features added uh, to it, including things like right-to-left layout support, accessibility, custom UI, background execution. You can read the list here, uh, as well as integrating Dart 2 and the richness of the, of the, the Dart language into Flutter. Uh, we're getting very close to beta. We're expecting a beta to be available before I.O. We have the channel ready. We're starting to kind of put the pieces in place. So uh, whilst we're not announcing the beta this morning, stay real tuned because we are, we are getting very, very close uh, to the point where we think Flutter is, is ready for prime time. And a few idea, a few examples of some of the things that we're working on. Uh, as, as with Dart, everything in Flutter is open source. Everything is out there on GitHub. So you can go and see uh, what's going on. This is a sampling of some of the areas where we've been uh, putting some energy right now to uh, add new capabilities, including widgets like maps and web view and uh, charts. Uh, we're doing continued work on accessibility. We already have accessibility support, but that's a journey we're continuing to work on. Uh, we're adding increased support for uh, performance, for text rendering. We're adding new language and tooling features, uh, like an enable embedding Flutter widgets into an existing app and profiling. Um, so check it out. There's the website there where you can see everything that's on our radar. We also love receiving your pull requests, your contributions, your issues, so we can continue to make sure that we build with Flutter uh, a framework and uh, an SDK that is perfectly suited for the needs that you have as a client app developer. So the third stanza, if you like, we've talked about Dart 2, the rebooted client optimized language. We've talked about Flutter as an example of one of the rich, powerful frameworks that build on the Dart language. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about some of the tooling uh, that we have uh, for Dart and Flutter together. Firstly, we build great IntelliJ plugin support for, uh, for the entire stack here. And that's uh, available for IntelliJ, for WebStorm, for Android Studio. And just this last year, we shipped 13 different versions of this. So we're moving very fast on the tooling. You can see a lot of momentum there. And uh, you can expect to see continued uh, delivery of, of updates to that. Our Portland team uh, deliver a lot of that work. So thank you to you guys. We also have uh, a redesigned uh, package repository for getting at uh, various different things that you need, whether you're building for the web, whether you're building a Flutter mobile app, or whether you're just building something that needs some core Dart functionality. And relatively uniquely as a packaging site, our repo here provides really good support for things like reputation. So when you uh, pick a particular package here, uh, we assign it a reputation score based off number of downloads, based off a few other metrics. Uh, so it's easier to kind of see the packages that you uh, might be interested in that are relevant uh, to your needs. Already, we have over 1,500 packages at pub.dartlang.org, which is pretty incredible, again, given where we're at in this uh, early stage of our journey with Dart and Flutter. Uh, and you can see more packages every day. There's a one that came out just uh, this last uh, 24 hours from AppTree, who've built a great Maps uh, plugin. Uh, and so you can see a bunch of different things that are coming out uh, here. One great example of how the community, how you guys are all helping us build a better Dart ecosystem is this one here. Um, Danny Tuppany. Uh, Danny, are you here somewhere? Wave your hand if you're here. There he is, hiding at the back there because he's, uh, he's shy. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Danny has built this amazing extension for Flutter and Dart for Visual Studio Code, which is a really popular developer tool. And uh, uh, again, we're seeing a lot of uh, interest in this. It's a great way um, to build uh, uh, Flutter or Dart applications. And I'm pleased to announce today that we're bringing Danny on uh, to work full time with us for the next 12 months on in, uh, continuing to improve uh, this uh, code extension to make it a really great alternative uh, to Android Studio IntelliJ for building these applications. So this is the opportunity we have right now between these three different pieces with Dart, this battle-tested, high-performance, scalable language, with Flutter, this beautiful SDK for building incredible experiences, with tooling that supports this and packages uh, that the community provides. We think we're poised for a really interesting 2018. We think we've got something here that is rather unique and I'm really excited by the opportunity as we move ahead uh, with this combination.
And others are uh, starting to see it as well. For example, this Medium article from Nick Manning uh, was a really good article talking about why he thinks Flutter will take off in 2018. Uh, even Visual Studio Magazine, uh, who are maybe not our most uh, loyal uh, fans, um, wrote this article about how uh, even things like Xamarin uh, are starting to be challenged by, by, by Flutter. So the opportunity is here. You guys are the early adopters. You were here first. Uh, you've been uh, following this journey uh, for a while. And we think this is the time. This is the year uh, where Flutter is going to be uh, amazing. So I want to close with a thank you. Some of you have done amazing work to help support us and get us to this point. In particular, Alexandra uh, has uh, 156 uh, pull requests uh, committed uh, in the code base for, Fl for Flutter and Dart. And Gunther uh, has uh, been uh, amazing at answering uh, questions on Stack Overflow with over 2,400 uh, answers to different questions. Plus, of course, we have this stack of uh, Google developer experts, uh, most of whom are here in, in, uh, in LA for the conference. So I'd like to particularly thank you guys for making uh, this, uh, this environment great. Thank you so much. So lastly, what next? Here at DartConf, we're going to have a really good time. We've got, I can't remember how many sessions, 12, 13, 14, 15 sessions. Uh, we've got unconference, an unconference. We've got lightning talks. Uh, it's a great opportunity not just to listen and learn, but also to network with other Google engineers, to network with each other. Secondly, we want your feedback. Tell us how we're doing. Tell us what we need to continue to invest and improve on to make this a great platform uh, for you. Thirdly, we'd really appreciate your help. We are still in alpha with Flutter. Dart is still starting to take off. We'd really love your support in being our evangelists to spread the good news of Dart and Flutter. So if you feel able, we'd really appreciate you uh, tweeting or sharing with your networks a little bit about your own experiences with the platform. And lastly, please contribute. We have everything that's out in the open. We, uh, we really do relish your contributions, whether it's finding new bug reports or whether it's uh, filing uh, issues or uh, contributing actually to the code with patches or, or uh, pub uh, widgets or things like that. So with that, I want to thank you. I hope you have a really good dark conference. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great uh, day and today and tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you.